Hello, Richard here, and welcome to part five of the series on restoring the old school, old school workbench. And I just want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to all my new Patreon subscribers. Uh, your support is really valued, really helps me out, really helps me grow the channel. So yeah, much appreciated. If you've been following along so far, you'll know that last time we got as far as restoring the old record number 52 vices. So they're both restored, they've been cleaned up and repainted, and they're ready to go back on the bench. So let's get on with that. Okay, well, it's time to start fitting the vices back into the bench now. Now, if you recall, with the uh, the top slabs, these have been flipped over. So this one was on the back, and it's been flipped over to the front. So we've got a nice flat surface on the top. But that does mean that all the vice mounting holes are now on the top when they need to be on the bottom. So I need to transfer this hole here underneath so that this vice bit here will be able to fit from underneath. So I'll bring you in a bit closer, and then I can show you what we're up against. This is the fixed jaw of the vise, and as you can see, it's got these webs on the back, which is why on here, we've got these slots that accommodate those. So we have a spacer that goes on here, and then the vise slots in like so. So what I need to do is basically recut this on the underneath. So this is quite easy on this side because I can just use the existing hole as a guide for the new one. Now I could just chisel straight through. I could just chop straight out the bottom, but that'll probably splinter the bottom out even more than it already is. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to bore some holes, one here and one here, and then probably one there and one there. And then on the underneath, I can then mark between those. I can scribe a line between the holes and then chisel from the other side through to connect with this. When that's done and I flip things back over, then I'll just fill these up with some bits of wood and uh, plane it flat. With this, the vise is this wide and the hole is this wide. And the reason is, is that these holes, they weren't routed out, as you can see, because they've got square corners. Uh, they were, looked like they were machine cut with some kind of, like a, like a stacked dado cutter or a, a milling cutter, something like that. If you look inside, you should be able to see there that this has got a curved edge here. You can see there's a curve in there. So that's why the slots are so much wider than they need to be. It was just part of the manufacturing process. So if I put the vice jaws in here, the slot only really needs to be this wide. So I'll drill the holes about here. Um, there's no point making the slot any wider than it needs to be. So I'll drill the holes through and, uh, and then we can get it flipped over and chiseled through. Right, so I'm just going to mark the edges of these so that I know where to drill. And on the, uh, on the webs, if you look on the back of the webs, you can see that the, uh, the slots are way deeper than they need to be. If I take this packing piece and put it on there, you can see that we only need to come back this far on the slots and not all the way back here, which means that I don't need to make these slots as big this way. So I can probably get away with making them quite a bit smaller than that. So we give that a measure, eyeballing it. I reckon that that is 20 millimeters or that's probably about three quarters of an inch. So we'll come back on here, 20 millimeters. I'll do that side so I mark it, about where that split is actually. And that's about as far back as I need to go, so I don't need to go all the way back to here to do it. Right, so let's get a brace and we'll uh, bore some holes through. Oops. I've flipped the slab upside down now so I can finish drilling the holes from this side. Apart from this one, obviously that one's already gone through as we've seen, <laughs> uh, but there you go. So that one's already through. Um, the others I'll just follow through from this side just to finish them off. And uh, we've got another one here, so hopefully that'll go through fairly easily. Oh, yeah, nice. That'll be through. And that's the other one. All right, so now all I need to do is just join these up with some uh, knife lines and then chop it out. Right, so we just join these holes up with some knife walls, knife edges. 
It's a bit tricky on this sort of rough old wood. It wants to wander around quite a lot. Now, on this, I'm just using the old Swiss Army knife. I mean, it has been sharpened to be really sharp, so works quite well for this sort of thing. So it's hard on this tricky old wood. That's my excuse anyway. All right, so let's see if it actually fits. So which way around? This way round. I'll go in there, I'll go on the spaces. There we go, ideal, that's, that's that one done. I'll get the front face of this cleaned up a little bit on the inside just to flatten it a little bit. And then we can get the lag bolts in. This one's mounted and then onto the other one. Now, before I go and cut the slots for the other vise, I thought I'd give this a bit of a test fit and uh, see how it lines up in terms of putting in the lag bolts. So what I've done, I've got an assembled vise and I've clamped it in place. So I've basically put it in the hole, put it in the slot, and I've clamped the jaw so that it's clamped against the front, which will hold this in the correct position for when it's under tension. And I thought I'd just have a look at seeing where the bolts would go. And here, this bolt goes straight in because the hole, I'm presuming the, the mounting hole on the other side, goes all the way through for some reason. So I need to sort that out. So what I thought I'd do is uh, plug that with a dowel. Now I've got some 20 millimeter beach dowel. That's about the uh, only dowel I do happen to have at the moment. So a bit big, but it'll do. I'll take the vise back off, bore a hole halfway through here, flip it over, bore it the rest of the way out, and then we'll glue a bit of that in. And then we can come back to that the next day, 
and uh, we've got something we can screw a lag bolt into. Okay, right, so let's get a bit of glue on here. Get glue in the hole as well. Right, so I left the glue to dry on the dowel pin overnight, got the vise clamped back in place, and now we can drill the holes for the lag bolts and get the thing bolted down. So, got the cordless drill, uh, using a number three drill. Uh, the cool diameter on that is about five and a half millimeters, which is, this is about 5.35 millimeters, so that should do the trick. Just put the uh, obligatory safety glasses on. We'll drill some holes. I want to make sure I'm not going to actually touch the uh, vice legs here. I don't want to mar them up. A bit too close. I'll come. We'll take this off in a minute, and I'll finish drilling the holes to depth and put it back on again. So again, we just get this clamped up so it's kind of bolted in in its kind of stressed position. Um, right, so let's get the bolts in. Right, well that's it bolted into place, so we'll flip it over and see how it looks. Right, so you can see here, now the vice is in, uh, this doesn't line up anymore. You can see if I get a ruler on that, uh, you can see the line of the, the holes in the top, and it doesn't line up with this. Because this riser is wider than the bench, it's kind of pushing things sideways. So we need to have a look over the front there and uh, see whether we need to chop a bit of wood out of the riser. So the holes in the slab are about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch away from where they need to be. It looks like this is the culprit. This uh, bit of packing here sticks out by about 10 millimeters or about three eighths of an inch. So I reckon if I just chop this off, trim this down, then hopefully things will line up again. It'll be a nice simple fix. Test, see if we can get a bolt through. There we go, ideal. So there's the first vise fitted. Just need to make a new jaw for that and then uh, fill in the holes on the top and then we can call that one done. So basically rinse and repeat for the other side. So I'll do that and I'll bring you back in when they're both on there. Right, so that's both the vices fitted, and as you can see on the left-hand one, I've got a new jaw made for that one. I'll just bring you in a bit closer and show you that. So this was made from an off-cut of beach that I got from eBay, which started out looking rather like this, just a chunk of beach, and I've cut it basically to the same size as the old one, and I'll just show you the old one to jog your memories to um, what it looked like before. So that's the old one, and there's the new one. And that's been cut the size and a couple of coats of Danish oil just to protect it a little bit. So what we need to do now is make another one for the other side. Now I've already got this blank prepared. Uh, th as I say, this started out as just a, a bigger piece like that. And this was all done by hand, all done with hand tools. In fact, the only power tool I'm going to be using on this bench is a cordless drill just to cut some of the smaller holes just because it's easier. Uh, but everything's done by hand. So Basically with this, I had to take the thickness down a little bit on this. I took about five millimeters off. So for that, I used the uh, good old classic four plane to rough the meat off of that with the jack plane, just to smooth it, flatten it and square the edges. Uh, rip saw to cut the ends off, cut it to size, and then just to trim the ends, uh, I'll put them on the, uh, the uh, shooting board and uh, clean the ends up with that. So that's ready to go. All we need to do now with this 
is cut the recess out of the back, drill a few holes in, chamfer the edges, Danish oil, jobs are good in. So let's get on with that. Right, I've got the blank for the new jaw clamped in the vise. That's nice and tight. And I've got it so the top of the jaw is just slightly proud of the top of the bench so I can plane it or flush later. And I've made it so that the jaw is centralized on the vise so I've got equal overhang either side. So what we'll do, just get the knife and I'm just going to mark where the sides of the, uh, the vise are from where we need to cut away. So I'll just mark some fairly light lines down there. Try not to cut the paint that I did. Okay, so that's that face marked out with a knife line. So the next thing to do is to mark the depth here. So to do that, we'll get a marking gauge and we'll take a measurement of the thickness of the vice jaw. Right, so we get that sort of near enough. And if anything, I'll probably want it to be a little bit deep. Maybe a bit too deep. There, that'll do. Okay, so that's our depth line, and then we're describing the sides and then we can start chiseling. Right, what I'll do now, I'm just gonna chop to the, uh, to the knife line. I've gotta say, this is an absolute luxury now. I've actually, for the first time, got a functional vice on a bench, so this is really nice having things this stable and easy to work on. Okay, so now we're made to start creeping up to the knife line. It's just a case now of reinforcing the depth of that slightly and uh, just carrying on until we can get most of the meat out of it.
Okay, so it's really just more of the same with that, really. We need to go around a number of more times to get the depth down a bit. Um, we'll get out most of the meat. And then to finish it off when we get close to depth, I should be using this, the old granny's tooth hand router or router plane. So that'll be a bit of fun. I'll bring you back in when we're a bit closer to that point. Okay, so that's the current state of play. We're getting down, and you can see we're sort of approaching the line here. We're sort of down on this end, a bit to take out in the middle there, so I need to get rid of all of this. Now, I think I've actually gone too far at the other end. What I've done, um, I've set a depth gauge to the uh, thickness of the jaw, so in other words, that's down to that line there. And if I go to the back, I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm about two or three millimetres, or about probably, uh, what's an eighth of an inch out. <laughs> so yeah, it got carried away, but I've cut too much out of the back end there. Uh, so yeah, pretty much all the way along, it's a bit low, and it's not too bad here, it's just at this front edge. So, like I say, I'll share my mistakes as well, you know, we all learn together in these things. So what I'll probably do is... Uh, rough this bit out we'll get the uh get the granny's tooth on it so that we can get it to a uniform depth see how far out we are and then i'll probably just uh glue in a piece in the back i really don't want any sort of voids in here um if i had a gap then there's a chance that when i clamp the vise together and i hold something at the top of the jaw it could cause it a crack it probably wouldn't but you know in for a penny in for a pound as they say so I'll carry on roughing some of this meat out of here, get the router plane on there, and uh, decide how I'm gonna fix my mistake. Right, well, we're uh, almost out of depth, so time to start bringing the router plane into play. Uh, what I'm gonna do is get this in the vise, and I've got a bit of a sacrificial guide here. With the router plane, it needs to ride on two surfaces, one either side of the uh, iron. And obviously this end, there's nothing for it to ride on. So what I'm gonna do is get this bit of uh, scrap wood here, and I'll put this in as a bit of a sacrificial fence on the side, which will just give the plane something to guide on. So we'll just snug this up so that it's kind of in roughly the right place, gets as level as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, now the depth on this, this is still set from when I finished the last one, so it's way too deep at the moment. You can see it rattles around. So we'll reset the depth. Now these have got a tapered iron, 
So these are quite easy to um, loosen up. Just gonna take the hammer, tap the iron out from the top, and that'll all come loose. Then we can retract the iron. And I'm just gonna rest that kind of roughly where it wants to go. And make sure it's roughly in the center. They're a little bit tricky, these things. But good fun, nonetheless. Right, so we'll get that roughly where it wants to be. That's a little bit low, so I'm gonna pull it back a little touch. When we tap the wedge in, it's gonna extend the iron down a bit as well. So that's too high. That's, that's probably okay where it is, actually. So I'm just gonna check it square. If we wanna make sure that the, uh, the iron, we wanna make sure the iron is perpendicular to the sole of the plane. So let's just get it so it looks square by eye, near enough. Okay, and then we'll just uh, tap the wedge down a bit. Try that, okay, that's good. So that's, that's barely touching. Now, one of the things I found with these is that I think because they're old, I think people tend to treat them with a bit too much reverence sometimes. You know, you think, oh, they're antiques, so you've got to be really careful and, ge and gentle and delicate with them. But if you ever see videos of the, the guys back in the day using these, they would sort of hog wood out with them. They'd use them quite aggressively. And I think that's kind of the trick is uh, you've got to put a bit of force behind these things. So, you know, use it like a tool. It, it, is, it is a tool, not an antique. So what I'll do, we'll just see if this actually takes a cut. That's really good, actually. That's just skimming the surface in one area. So it means I can just start to level that area down a little bit. And what you want to do with these as well is um, use a sort of a, a curved slicing motion. You either use it on an angle, so you're cutting at that sort of angle, so the blade is at an angle to where you're cutting, or actually rotate it, so rock it around. So hold one hand still and the other one to push. And using a slicing motion helps if it gets a bit stuck. You can just push it backwards and forwards, but it'll often dig in. So let's just move that around a bit and scan around, make sure that there's no really high spots. Just digging in a little bit. Okay, great. So now what we do, we want a little bit more depth. So just give the iron a tap. And this is just a real feel thing. You need to just really sort of get a feel for how hard to hit it. So we'll tap the iron, tap the wedge, and see where we go from there. Okay, that's digging in now. And like I said, you want to use these fairly aggressively. If you try and use them gently, they're not really going to work. Um, one of the things I found works quite well is to sort of get a groove started down the center of the piece. And then once you've got a groove cut, then sort of just step to the side. So you're only cutting slices off the side of the groove. Let me show you what I mean. If you get it started like this. And it's, it's biting at the back. And you, I don't know if you can see there's a bit of a line there. And from there, then I'll just step sideways. Like that, so you can see that that's leveled that little area. And we just basically do that. We just keep tapping it down, taking off a little bit at a time until we've got it uniform all the way. So hopefully you can see that we got actually quite a nice finish starting there already. It's sort of leveled out all the way over this part here. 
uh, we got this little bit of a low spot here. Oops. <laughs> um, but that's coming on quite well. And we can take a height gauge, give us an idea of how far we got to go. So we've probably got about another two or three millimeters to come down on that, which will take a few passes. You know, we're not taking, we're not hogging loads of uh, wood off in one go. So anyway, that's basically the gist of it. So we'll carry on and I'll bring you back when we're a bit closer. Right, well, I've got it planed down to depth now. And uh, the bits that I overcut before aren't looking quite so bad as they did. Uh, ideally, I'd fill this in, but I think that would just be nitpicking, really. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, even under the lowest bit that I cut here, um, there's still about 11 millimeters of beach. Um, so uh, that's going to be plenty strong enough what I'm going to do. So, right, let's uh, see if it fits. There we go. Right, so let's uh, just tighten that up a bit. Okay, next up, we'll drill a couple of holes through so we can screw it on. Uh, then all we need to do really is just chamfer the edges off a bit, give it a coat of Danish oil and screw it back on. Job done. Right, I'm just going to spot the holes with a quarter inch drill. And then we'll whip the jaw out and drill it through eight millimeters in the vise. Okay, so we'll count the sink it uh, for these screws. They're the screws that came with it. And uh, that's my largest counter sink bit. So it should be just about big enough, hopefully. Right, so we've got a few little pencil marks here and there and a bit of grubbiness on it on the back. So let's give it a little light go over with the plane just to smooth it off, clean it up, and then that's ready for some oil. So all that remains is just to give it a little coat of uh, some Danish oil, just to protect it, stop the dirt getting into it, make it look nice as well. And I'm only going to put this on the back side. I'm not going to put this on the face of the vise because uh, the face where it's going to be contacting the work, I want that to be nice and grippy and I don't want it to risk scratching the work. I mean, Danish oil will cure off a bit like varnish. So I want that to be fairly smooth. And the front face is going to be sanded anyway. That won't be a plain finish. That would just be sanded. Get a little bit across the top. I'll probably give this a few coats over the next couple of days as I'm passing. It certainly soaks into the end grain really well. So as you can see. And there we have it, vice number two with its nice shiny new jaw fitted, all ready for some work. We'll uh, zoom out and then you can see both devices all sorted. So the next job to do is going to be to start to work on this rear slab over here. I think that'll be the next thing that we'll sort out. So that's coming up next. Right, so now we've got two vices all fettled up, all fixed in and working nicely. So two vices I can use, the top of the bench is bolted on. And next thing to do is start working on the top. 
So I've taken the rear slab off. Uh, this is it here. Um, so that's the next thing to work on. And we're not far off actually getting the thing finished and ready for some oil and some use, <laughs> which would be really great. So I'll just walk you through what we need to do with this. Um, and once this one's done, this one will just be a sort of a rinse and repeat job. So I'll just show you on this one. Um, so I'll bring you in a bit closer to show you the jobs we've got to do with this. All right, so one of the jobs I need to do is to fill in these holes on top. There's a couple of holes where the vices were. Bear in mind, this used to be the underneath of the bench where the vices were mounted in here. So these need to be filled up. So what we'll do for that is we'll cut up some bits of uh, these beach offcuts that I've acquired from eBay. We'll cut them to size and we'll cut those in. There's a few little holes as well, so I'll probably drill those and put dowels in just to tidy it up. Another job we've got to do is there's a groove here, which uh, again, remember this was flipped up the other way originally. Uh, this groove is where the um, tool well board goes. The tool well board was uh, rebated and fits into this groove. So this needs to be filled in and uh, a new groove cuts lower down. So for this, again, what I'll do, I'll cut up some of the beach off cuts and we'll fill this in with beach, glue it in, plane it flat. Uh, this bit here is nearly broken off. If you look at that, that's about to snap off. So I probably will actually snap that off and then glue it back. But that's what I want to avoid. This doesn't really need to be filled in other than the fact that these edges can just very easily break off. So we'll glue some wood up in here, strengthen that up. Obviously the whole thing needs to be cleaned and planed. So I'll probably run over it with a card scraper. Uh, before that, I'll probably run over it with the metal detector and just make sure there's no nasty nails sticking in there. Uh, most of the nails are underneath. So this should be fairly clear, but we'll check it anyway. Give it a card scrape. Um, it can then have a bit of a plane and that should pretty much be it. So I'll give it a check over for any nails, get those removed, give it a scrape and a clean up and uh, we'll start sorting this out. Well, there weren't too many nails in this, which is a bit of a blessing. So uh, I took out about three, I guess. So next up, give it a bit of a scrape with the card scraper. Get the worst of the paint and varnish off it and dirt and then uh, see how it cleans up.
Right, well, that's had a little bit of a, a plane. That's probably about as good as it's going to get on that. I'm not going to go too crazy. Uh, we just call it character. And the uh, the groove, I've cleaned that out a little bit. I've scraped that out, run a chisel down it just to clean it up. So what I need is for it to be quite clean. It's quite a lot of black gunge on either side, just from years and years of accumulated dirt. So I'm just going to run a bit of sandpaper through that as well uh, to help to clean up the sides a bit, just so the glue will actually be able to get at the wood a bit better when we glue the uh, the strips of wood in there. So you can see the amount of dirt that's come off that. Pretty grotty, so uh, we'll keep going until we can clean it up a little bit more, I think. Right, so we'll just give the top a little bit of a clean up as well. There's some glue or something here, so we'll just scrape the worst of that off. Again, I'm not looking for perfection with this, I'm just really looking to improve on it, you know, get it a bit cleaner than it was. Move it in the general direction of goodness, as they say. Right. Got there, that's good enough for that. I think at this point the scraper's getting a little bit dull, so uh, we'll give it a bit of a plane, I'll get this sharpened up for the next bit, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, that's cleaning up quite nicely, uh, but you can see here, it looks like we've got what looks like hammer marks uh, underneath. They look quite old because they're dirty. And it makes you wonder how it got hammer marks underneath. Now it's possible if this was an overhang that these are actually clamp marks from people clamping too hard. Not sure about this bit, because this would have been on the inside of the bench by the tool well. So what I might do with these is to try and raise them up with a wet towel and a hot iron, see if we can actually get these dents out a little bit rather than trying to plane down to them. So I'm not too fussed. I mean, I'm happy to leave them like they are, but if we can improve it a bit more, then so be it. So let's give that a go. All right, so let's try the old iron with a damp towel trick and see if that'll raise the grain up a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, that feels like it's doing something. I reckon those dents are definitely shallower than they were. Okay, let's try this little bit here, see if we can improve that a bit as well. Okay, yeah, that certainly feels a bit smoother. Give it a bit more. Well, uh, still a little bit of a dent there, but what I'll do, I'll just keep going over a few bits. We'll give it a plane and then we'll come back and see how he did. Well, that's had a bit of a steam. Um, it's dried off. I've given it a few swipes with the plane again. And I'm quite happy with that, actually. That's taken out quite a lot of the uh, the denting there. So you can see that's hardly visible. I can just about feel that one. And same there. That's a slight dent there. Bear in mind, that's just a bit of a quick cleanup. Once we get all these uh, holes filled in, and we get everything together, it'll have another sort of uh, few goes with a plane. So I reckon that's going to come up really nicely. So uh, I'm really happy with that. Now, let me just give you a little bit of a flashback to where we were before. Oh, how far we've come. <laughs> right, well, we'll get on with uh, sorting out the rest of it, and I'll bring you back in when I've got something to show you. Right, well, it's had an initial cleanup now, and it's come up quite well. Uh, one thing I did notice, though, was that over at this end, which was over at that end a moment ago, uh, there was a patch of oil on here, and I mentioned this in a previous episode where at some point someone's done an engine rebuild on the bench and they've gone and leaked dirty engine oil all over it, which is a real shame because it just really contaminates the wood. Um, so here you see a little bit of staining on here, and if you sort of rewind a bit, you'll see that, that was worse. I've actually um, got a bit of, uh, let me show you, got a bit of uh, gunk ultra on that. Just basically swilled some over with this vertical, let it run down, rinse it off some water, and I've dried it out. So that seems to have got rid of some of it. And it certainly smells a lot better as well. So anyway, I took care of that. Now the next thing I want to do is to sort out the groove on the top. Now for this, for the groove, I need to fill this one in and then cut another one here next to it because this is going to be upside down. And for that, I've got some uh, beach off cuts. I got these off eBay for a fairly good price. Got about 12 of these. So I'm going to basically rip these up and make some uh, Dutchman to go in here. And we'll fill that up, glue that up. Now this front piece as well, this is actually snapping off. And that's exactly what I want to avoid in the future. This is going to be on the top. So what I don't want is to put a bit of weight on it and find that these start to snap off. So I'm going to just saw through here, snap this off completely. And then when it all gets glued in and filled, I'll glue this back on, clamp it up, and off we go. Right, so let's go and rip one of these. So the width I need to rip this to is 12 millimeters and about half an inch. And I've set my marking gauge to that width. So we'll get that marked out. Right, so now it's the case of planing down to the line, seeing if it fits, and uh, make another four of these.
Right, so that's all of those cut, five of those. And what I'll do now is just square the edges off on the shooting board and then they'll be ready to go in. Right, so last little job before we get these uh, wooden strips glued in, just to remove this snapped off bit so we can glue that back on. So I'm just gonna saw through the edge here. So I can snap it off cleanly. Okay, right, so let's, uh, let's get some of these glued in. <laughs> 